This is total. Hey, hey, what the hell are we, re are we recording? Yeah, and you're screwing up the intro. What about my part? It's supposed to be our podcast, right? Come on, man. I'm trying to be professional about this. You know damn well there ain't nothing professional about what we're doing here. <laughs> Welcome to Totally Unprofessional. It's Manuel and Justin, his two best friends shooting the breeze about nothing and about everything. We're separated by 10 years. Two points of view on every subject from two different generations. Listen as we talk sports, events, and anything else that might come up. There's nothing professional about what we're doing here, hence the name, Totally Unprofessional. Alright, it's Friday, it's episode 21, and uh, as promised, I'm here by myself. Manuel is... Well, should be in Vegas by now. Uh, he will be attending UFC 200 tomorrow. Uh, big fight, craziness going on. Um, so I'm here, handling the podcast business, holding down the fort. Didn't make the trip this time. Uh, but I'm sure when he gets back that uh, he'll have some good stories to tell and, and tell us all about the experience at 200 and uh, the new uh, T-Mobile Arena that the UFC holds their fights in. This is going to be the first time they hold their fights in that new arena. So we'll see uh, how it goes and what he thinks of the new arena and, and uh, how it compares to the MGM. Because we went to the MGM and watched two fights there before, so we'll see what happens. But uh, first, I want to make sure that, uh, as we've talked about in the past, that we don't ignore what's going on uh, outside of the sports world or around us. And uh, it's just been you know somewhat crazy the last few days with uh, the shootings by police officers on the gentleman in Minnesota and in Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge Louisiana, um, and then cops getting shot and killed yesterday in Dallas. Um, let me just say this, and I, I can speak for Manuel about this, that, you know, in past episodes, we talked about Jesse Williams' speech and, and about, you know, his our opinion on his speech on how it was targeted uh, at a certain race and how we felt about it. I still stand by our opinion, but just because whether it's me or Manuel or anybody else disagrees with someone's opinion doesn't mean that it's okay to act violent or irrational or to act up. Um, now, I, I didn't watch the video of the guy in Baton Rouge. I, I had only heard about it and, on the news and uh, over the radio um, it, it was dirty. Uh, what what was done was that from what we know, uh, from the video that was about 50 seconds long and my understanding of what the video contained, from what we know is with that as evidence until something else is proven, the cops killed that guy. Straight up, right there on the sidewalk, six shots straight in the back for no reason. Um, my understanding from what I was taking from all the pieces of the information that I read and saw and listened to was that the gentleman was selling music outside of a store. The store owner knew him, was cool with him being there, and by state law in the state of Louisiana, you are allowed to carry a gun. You don't need a uh, what we call here in California a CCW, a permit to carry a concealed weapon. And that gentleman had a gun. Somebody called the cops and said that he was having an altercation with somebody out front of this can, this store that this gentleman owned. And the video picks up or starts with cops rushing this guy and taking him to the ground. And while he's on the ground, he's not resisting. He's not squabbling. They don't talk to him and say, hey, man, you fit a description that we heard. They just take him to the ground, and in the middle of them working with him on the ground, they shoot him six times in the back. That's murder. Now, I don't know. I didn't read anywhere where they gave the ethnicity of the cops. I'm assuming that they were white cops. That does not does not mean that, and just because we disagreed with Jesse Williams' speech and how he went about it, that we think that what happened was okay. Here at Totally Unprofessional, this podcast... Our thoughts and prayers go out to both families and to the families of the police officers that were shot and killed yesterday. Violence isn't the answer. It's it's not. You know, it. I don't think in any way, shape, or form that anything 
in retaliation to that, out of anger and the craziness of shooting people is the answer. Or hurting people is the answer. Protesting, absolutely, if that's how you want to go about it. If you want to do something and stand up and, and you know speak on something you feel so strongly about, absolutely. We've said that on this show many times. If you feel strongly or have an opinion about something, stand up for it. Be the person that's willing to stand up and, and speak up and be loud. But to turn around and kill somebody in what is cold blood in return as what is looked at as retaliation that's not okay that two wrongs don't make a right and i've seen many celebrities today post on social media about that and about their opinions and their feelings and and whatnot i'm wholeheartedly a hundred percent i hope that those police officers in both cases get convicted and get life or get the death penalty that they deserve it They absolutely deserve it. And anybody that's involved or friends with those people and know the way that they were, I hope that they're willing to stand against them and speak up. There was a great piece by Peter Rosenberg, who is a on-air personality for the Hot 97 radio show. And he they they took phone calls throughout the day after right after the Louisiana shooting happened. And a, a policeman called in and Rosenberg asked him you know, with the information that we know, you know, could you admit that the situation looks bad on the police? And the police officer couldn't even say yes. And Rosenberg was very passionate. I thought that it was well said and it was strongly said with passion. It wasn't violent. It wasn't, you know, cursing. It was just strongly said. He spoke passionately to the police officer while he was on the telephone saying that this is the problem that we have in this country with the police officers that when a police officer does something wrong, they don't call each other out. That in Rosenberg's profession, that if an on-air personality acted up and did something irresponsible or irrational or said something that was out of line, that he would call them out and say, hey, you know, that was wrong and you're bad for saying that or doing that, whatever the case may be. But that police officers won't do that, that they don't call each other out. They don't get ahead of this by standing up against other police officers and saying, hey, they were wrong, that there are good cops out here. But what that guy or those gentlemen did that day was wrong. And that's a problem. And that's why they don't understand why people get pissed off in the streets and why the public and society reacts the way that they do. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that by shooting police officers that that's okay or that that's the answer because it's not. It's not. This is the main reason why in this country that other countries think of us and other ethnicities like Muslims that come here or, you know, Russian people from other countries and other backgrounds that look at us and think that this country is weak or that this country has issues because we're fighting with each other. It's overall we're fighting with each other. I think that all lives matter. It's not just black lives. Yes, I understand in this situation it was two black guys. I get that. I 100% get that. And I I absolutely think that what happened was a hate crime in both situations. But all lives matter. These guys were people. The police officers were people. They're not just black people, white people. They are human beings. And that's something that people just for, seem to forget. That they're people. Their fathers, their sons, their husbands. Their friends. Those are the things that people seem to forget or that they leave out. And no, I'm not justifying any of it. None of the shootings are okay. We have got to do better as a group. Not just one race, not just that race. We need to all do a better job of trying to make sure that we work together and stand up together and be united together against hatred of this nature. There's a difference in being tough on somebody and hazing somebody a little bit and being too sensitive about it versus going all the way to an extreme spectrum where they have to go all the way out and do something so irrational and crazy that it's on the news. Taking someone's life is not the answer and it's not okay. And normally we keep this show pretty lighthearted we, or at least if we debate things that it's you know a healthy debate, nobody really gets mad and... Things like that, but that that's something that again I wasn't gonna just let go and not speak about. Um, it, it you know, like like I said, I speak for Manuel and myself that 
you know, we, we do this podcast for people to be able to listen, whether it's on their way to work or while they're working and keep it lighthearted and fun and understand that when you listen to our podcast that you hear, you know, I would have a conversation like they're having with my friend or I wish I could sit down and talk with them and be on the show and give my opinion. That stuff all comes into play, but there's a serious side to both of us and things like this, just like we talked about the Orlando shooting, this is another situation where ignorance isn't bliss. You know, the more you know, the better. And we're trying to make sure that people understand that we understand that and we know what's going on too. So just wanted to, you know, speak on that for a minute. We do have a social media platform. I see so many people posting that video and, and stuff like that. Like, that's not that's not cool. Don't post the video. That guy, those people have families. The, nobody should be watching those people getting killed over and over again on social media. And I feel like it's a responsibility of myself and this podcast that with us having a platform that we put out this podcast that it needs to be spoken on. So I wanted to make sure that that was covered before I go any farther. Now, uh, as we move on from that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you guys know that this today's podcast outside of this, is it's all about UFC. There's not really anything else going on right now. Sports-wise, baseball, my Red Sox, Ortiz hit his 19th homer today, but that's about it. Uh, so it's going to be all about UFC 200, about Fight Night 90, which was last night with Rafael Dos Anjos and Eddie Alvarez. And currently, as I record this, the Ultimate Fighter finale is currently on. So... Uh, the strawweight women's title is the main event. So let's go ahead and jump straight into this. Uh, for the undercard for UFC 200 is uh, Kat Gonzano versus Juliana, Pe- Juliana Pena. Uh, it will be on Fox Sports 1. The card that's on Fox Sports 1 could probably be its own pay-per-view, to be honest. I mean, it, it's got some big names. It's got some strong fights and some great matchups. So... To start it off, they got Kat Zingano versus Juliana Pena, which is a bantamweight fight. Zingano's number three, Pena number five. And if I'm not mistaken, Zingano's beat both Nunez and Tate and stopped both of them. So it should be interesting. Um, it should be a great fight. This this whole card is just stacked. I mean, understanding the craziness that's happened the last few days, and I'll get into that too um, with the main event changing. But... Just this whole card, they made sure that 200 was hopefully as best as it could possibly be. Um, Johnny Hendricks and Kelvin Gastelum. The bad news today coming out of the weigh-ins was Johnny Hendricks did not make weight. Uh, It was supposed to be fought at 185, and he did not make the weight. So that means that 20% of his purse that that Johnny Hendricks gets now goes to Kelvin Gastelum because he made weight and Johnny Hendricks did not. So And Johnny Hendricks needs this fight. He's been on a bit of a skid. He's been on a down This is the second time that he had issues with his weight. So it's definitely a must win for Johnny Hendricks. Kelvin Gastelum, dude's been waiting. He's an analyst on UFC tonight. He's 12-2. and two. Hendricks is 17-4. and four. Number six welterweight is Johnny Hendricks. And number 12 is Gastelum. So if Gastelum beats him, hey, that's a feather in his cap to move up and, and definitely get in there in the top 10 fights and, and try to punch his ticket for a welterweight title shot. Uh, the next fight they have listed is TJ Dillashaw versus Rafael Asakoro. I probably butchered the shit out of his name. Uh, Dillashaw is ranked number one in bantamweight at one twenty at the one hundred twenty five pound weight class, and uh, Rafael is number three. So this is going to be a good fight. Uh, Rafael already owns a win over TJ by decision. Uh, TJ he. As upset as he was about not getting his rematch with Cruz, this is your opportunity to prove it, buddy. Because it's a situation where he complained, he said a lot about how it should have been him, not Uriah, that he's better, and this and that. Personally, if he beats Rafael, then I think that Dillashaw should fight Uriah, and then then he gets Cruz if he beats Uriah, and go from there. Because the money, if it makes money, it makes sense, right? The UFC is their own promoters. And it makes sense that TJ and Uriah don't like each other from Team Alpha Male's situation and TJ leaving with Dwayne Ludwig to the Muscle Farm Gym in Denver. So I think that that, it's definitely a situation where TJ needs to prove something. And if if Rafael here uh, 
beats TJ, then he automatically should be jumping right up in the, the title hunt. And so we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully that one comes through. And that one, to me, that one could be the headliner on a pay-per-view. I mean, the, with Kat Zangano and Johnny Hendricks, Kelvin Gastelum on there, and uh, Juliana Pena, that, those three fights right there could be three main fights on a pay-per-view. Uh, and then the last one for the undercard is Sage Northcutt and Enrique Marin. Uh, normally Northcutt fights at uh, lightweight and Enrique Marin fights at welterweight. Uh, Sage Northcutt coming off of a loss. He swears up and down it was a fluke. Uh, we're going to find out. Enrique Marin's 9-3. and three, So I don't know too much about Marin. Um, both made weight no problem today. So we'll see what happens. I mean, it's Sage Northcutt has been this dude who burst right out of the gate. And everybody's like, oh, holy crap, this guy's all cut up. He's jacked. You know, he, he came in and, and finished the fight. like, And then he got stopped with uh, losing by submission. So they said he was dealing with strep throw and he got choked out. And that, that's fine. But we'll find out if it was a fluke or not. If another guy beat you and he choked you out, chances are it wasn't a fluke. Unless you made some sort of major mistake. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's the undercard for UFC 200. So before I get to the main card, we'll go back a little bit to last night. Uh, the co-main event and the main event for UFC uh, Fight Night 90, which was on UFC Fight Pass, which I just picked up yesterday. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. It's like Netflix for the UFC. Um, the co-main event was uh, Derek Black Beast Lewis versus Roy Big Country Nelson. I think the judges got it wrong. Uh, I felt like Roy dominated the second round for sure. And the third round, I think, went to him. He ate a couple shots in the third round, but I felt like he controlled the fight being on top. And that he had top position for over four minutes. I know that Black Beast had more shots significantly. It was like 50 to 7 or something like that. And I get that. And most of those came in the first round. But three rounds is what the fight's determined on. And I felt Roy controlled that fight. But I guess... As I spoke to a couple different people, like I said to them, I guess that's why you don't leave it in the judge's hands. Because you wind up in a situation like that where you wind up leaving it out there and shit like that can happen. So, it sucks. Uh, I was hoping for Roy to come through because Derek, Derek Lewis was just blasted, just straight up gassed. And that right hand he threw at the end that Roy ate knocked the spit out of Roy's mouth. If you have an opportunity, go back and look at it on YouTube. It was a bit crazy. Um... So it was, and Roy was laughing when it was over. Like he, after he ate that shot, he was laughing. So I don't know how bad that hurt him, but they say that Roy's got the best chin in MMA. So he, he proved it a little bit last night. Um, his game plan was money and I felt that he won that fight, but judges thought otherwise. Uh, the main event was Rafael Dos Anjos and Eddie Alvarez. And Eddie Alvarez came out like a rocket and lit Rafael Dos Anjos up. Uh, they started off kind of feeling each other out, but Dos Anjos was throwing those kicks and Eddie Alvarez was returning the favor. And then all of a sudden he caught Dos Anjos right behind his hands of him blocking and caught him on the side of the ear and temple. And that was it. He started rolling back and Eddie Alvarez jumped all over him. And you got to give credit where credit is due. You know, Dos Anjos tried to hang in there. He tried to stick it out. He tried to fight through it, but Herb Dean made the right call. He let him fight for a little while, but at one point when Eddie Alvarez had him up against the cage, he was just eating shots in the face over and over and over again. And you have to understand that when you're not defending yourself that that fight's got to be stopped. You can't be mad at that if you're Rafael Dos Anjos. But uh, Eddie Alvarez just put the lightweight division on notice that uh, he's the champ. He was a former Strike Force champ as well. So he's the, or uh, not Strike Force, but excuse me, Bellator. So uh, he's the first person to hold belts in both. So that was pretty cool for him. And uh, if you guys get a chance, look up Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz. Uh, Joey Diaz's reaction, because Eddie Alvarez is from Philadelphia also, he just loses his mind. And it's hilarious. So that was uh, last night. Uh, like I said, the Ultimate Fighter finale right now is going on. Uh, they got Parsons and Brooks from the main card that's fighting right now. There's, I believe... Uh, Two more fights, and then the main car, uh, the main event, which is uh, Johanna and Claudia for the strawweight uh, women's title at 115. So that one should be a good one. The first fight was super close, and they both literally hate each other. 
So it it definitely should be a good fight. We'll we'll see what happens here um, as the night goes on. If these fights finish up quick enough, I may be sitting here recording this podcast while it's going on, and I'll give you some live commentary if that's that's the case. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now getting back to uh, the main card for UFC 200, uh, it it gets a little bit bananas. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the issue coming in to the night last night was that they were wanting to make sure that everybody made weight. That was the only issue. It wasn't a big deal. Everything else. Well, then John Jones got flagged two nights ago for a, um, or excuse me, two nights ago, they were just worried about making weight. Then John Jones gets flagged for a USADA violation, which means that it was a substance. It They didn't say that it was a PED. They didn't say that it was just a substance that he took not knowing. It was just one that he took. Um, now, they immediately pulled him off the card with DC. And DC, I mean, you got to feel bad for, for Daniel Cormier because... This is the fight that he feels defines him. That if he doesn't win this fight with John Jones, then his title means nothing to some degree. So he really wanted the fight, and then to be told like, "Hey, man, it, it ain't gonna happen." And and they even showed it on the UFC web series embedded, which was really tough to watch. Um, but the UFC stuck with it, trying to find him another fight. John Jones requested an appeal that his B sample get tested because the the sample that they took was from an out of competition and if you don't know what an out of competition sample is that means that during their time where they're not fighting so the week leading into the fight so from Sunday to Saturday of the week of the fight that's considered an in competition test but anytime before that or after that you can be tested randomly and that's called an out of competition test and this was an out of competition test that Jones failed so he requested a B sample be tested and it was confirmed this morning that the same substance that was in the A sample was also in the B sample. So whatever he took was definitely in his system. Now he went out yesterday and, and had a press conference and said that he was un, completely unaware that, you know, that there was something bad in there and that he's been taking, excuse me, that he's been taking the same supplements most of his career, but that he tried something different when he started doing the powerlifting. And while he was doing the powerlifting, uh, that his coaches knew what he was taking, but nobody requested, you know, a list from USADA. Nobody called to get it approved. That he didn't write any of the information down, and it really made him look worse than what it was because it really made him look irresponsible for the fact that he didn't even try to look into getting it done. So for that, you know, Dana White said on Fox Sports Radio this morning to Colin Cowherd that he's no longer speaking to John Jones. That even if John Jones tries to call him, he's not talking to him because he has nothing to say to him. You know, he needs to get rid of the people around him and and clean house is what the quote was from Dana White. So, I mean, it, it's just one of those things where you feel bad for DC and and to some degree you feel bad for the people that you know paid for tickets or that were planning on ordering the fight because if John Jones was your guy or Daniel Cormier was your guy and you wanted to see him beat the shit out of John Jones, that ain't happening no more. So. That part sucks that you don't get to see him compete if you're a John Jones fan. And and personally I wanted to see John Jones get his ass beat, but it is what it is. The UFC stepped in and said Daniel Cormier still wants to fight if the fight makes sense. And they got Anderson the Spider Silva. Um to me, it's not really all that crazy of a fight because of where Anderson's at. I'm not saying that Anderson can't compete. I'm not saying that Anderson's done, but in his last few showings, it, it hasn't been great. He, he's coming off of a loss to Michael Bisbee, who's now the current uh, middleweight champion. So, I mean, it's not like he lost to a slouch, but at the same time, like, he, he hasn't been the old spider, and that's the problem. <sighs> so, that being said, you know, it's, it's one of those things where they have to understand that it's not going to be the same. People that are watching the fight need to understand. Today, Anderson Silva weighed in at 198. So he's he's lighter than where Daniel Cormier is. And Cormier is an Olympic wrestler. I'm not saying that, that you know Silva's not fast, but we don't know how much he's been training. We don't know what the backstory is. It's, it's just different. So that being said, 
you know, that's the new main event for UFC 2, or not main event, but now a new fight on the card, because with that happening, they moved Misha Tate and Amanda Nunes up to the main event, Brock Lesnar and Mark Hunt are the co-main event, and then you got Cormier, which will be in the middle of the card, and then you got uh, Frankie Edgar and Jose Aldo, part two for the interim featherweight title, who my boy Conor McGregor is still the champion of, whether people like it or not, Conor McGregor is still the champion at 145. And uh, he announced in the press conference uh, yesterday for 202 that when he's done with Nate, that he'll fight the winner of whoever wins this interim fight and smash on them and then go back to whatever he wants to do. So it'll be interesting to see who wins. The last time Aldo beat Edgar, but Edgar's been on a tear, just a straight tear. And uh, I hope, I really hope that uh, Edgar comes through because he's a dude who's deserved a shot for a long time and... I would like to see him fight uh, Conor McGregor. I think it'd be a great fight. And on top of that, you know, Jose Aldo can say whatever he wants, but he was fixated on Conor McGregor for a minute. It, it was an issue that he had after he got beat in 13 seconds. It was an obsession to say the things that he said on social media and, and take little jabs at him when they were pulled off the 200 card. You know, it, it's one of those things where I would like to see Jose Aldo get knocked out and prove that Conor McGregor really was and still is in his head. Um, the main card will also have Travis Brown versus Cain Velasquez. Uh, Cain's healthy for the first time. He helped DC in his camp. That'll be interesting to see what happens with them. Um, you know, Cain's a, a, a dude who kind of goes up and down. You don't really know which Cain you're going to get. So it, it'll be interesting to see how him and Travis Brown bang it out. Uh, I haven't seen too many of Travis Brown's fights. I know that he had a banger last year with Andre Orlowski. Uh, I saw it on uh, the Best of 2015 DVD, and it was just straight bananas. And I saw him fight Matt Mitrione earlier this year. So, I mean, the samples that I've seen, it's it's been kind of okay. You know, it, it hasn't been a great sample to, to judge off of. But... Um, you know, it's it's the heavyweight, and all it takes is one punch. And when you're a heavyweight, to to drop somebody, it's that older weight class where they just they're ready to go and drop you at any time. So, those two, you know, should be a great fight. Uh, as I mentioned, you have Brock Lesnar versus Mark Hunt. Um, that to to me is it'll be interesting to see where Brock's at because at the weigh-in today, dude was jacked to the gills. He's looked the best that he's literally looked in years um the training camp has done him well and on top of that he's fighting a guy who is known to be dropping people with that super punch uh he's he does walk off knockouts he's dropped people and then walked off shook his head dropped people and and just kind of gone off out of the way and for the most part i mean that's his game he's got some kicks for sure he's got some kicks but I mean, that's his thing, is that, that big right hand that, and that, or left hand, whichever he's going to tag you with, and he drops you and it's over. He dropped Roy Nelson, who ate, like I said, he ate a huge right from Derek Lewis. So, I mean, he's he's got some mad power. And so far, they haven't been shit-talking each other. They've, they've shown respect to one another. So, we'll see what happens come tomorrow night. Uh, Brock... If Brock goes to the ground with him, I think Brock's got the advantage. But if he tries to stand and bang with him, eh, I'm going to give it to Hunt. Hunt's got the advantage on that. Um, and then, like I said, um, with uh, Misha Tate and Amanda Nunes, they are the main event of the evening, uh, and deservingly so. Um, right now, Amanda Nunes is ranked number four. She's 12-4, and four, and Tate is obviously the champion at 18-5. and five. Uh some people want to know if, you know, Tate's championship isn't a fluke, that it's it's legit because people think that it's more of the fact that Holly Holm made a mistake rather than Misha Tate capitalizing. And uh, to me, it, it doesn't matter whether she made the mistake or if, you know, Tate just capitalized because at the end of the day, what matters is the W. And currently, Misha Tate's the Bantamweight Women's Champion, so... You got to be willing to, to accept that and tip your hat to Misha Tate because she's, she's been around for a minute. She's gone through hell and back, you know, dealing with the Ronda Rousey bug. And, you know, that's another thing that people don't really know when she's coming back or if she's coming back. So I hope for her sake that Ronda does come back and that, you know, they get it on for a third time and, and see 
what happens there because I think this is at this point, especially if Misha Tate wins, you're going to see a whole lot more comfor- comfortable and confident Misha Tate. And that's something that you could tell against Ronda in the past she didn't have. So we'll we'll see what happens. My money would be on Tate to retain. So we'll see what happens uh, come tomorrow night. Um, and then on top of that, with the UFC, they got fights next weekend. They have fights the week after. And then they have UFC 201 on the 30th at the end of the month, which is uh, Robbie Lawler and Tyrone Woodley. So it, it should be good. Uh I just heard today that Demetrius Johnson pulled out of his fight due to injury. So they're going to have to find another co-main event for that set of fights. Um, but it should be crazy. Um, it, I, it's something like between yesterday, today, and tomorrow, it's something like 30 some odd fights in three days. I mean, that's that's a lot of fights. You know, even if it is UFC, that's just straight up a lot of fights. So we'll see what happens and see how everything turns out. I guarantee you come Monday we'll be talking about it, it, the winners and losers and what we saw, what we didn't. Uh, I may or may not be by myself come Monday. Uh, it depends on what time Manuel flies back in uh, to get back in time to do the podcast or not because the way that we usually schedule it, uh, he would be back too late for that. So we'll see. He might be having too much fun in Vegas. Uh, I told him when he left, don't lose nobody this time. So we'll see what happens, see if he's got some good crazy stories with the guys that he went with. He also went with uh, the mayor of Woodlake. Uh, shout out to Louie. Uh, doing his mayorly duties when they picked up Mano Day. He came out shaking people's hands in the neighborhood. It was it was a nice gesture by the mayor. Um, and he knows, and you know, he's been with us the last couple times we've been there. So it's it's been cool. So hopefully they're having a good time. I know they're doing it up tonight, enjoying themselves. And they'll be at the fights tomorrow night. Um like I said, we're, we're trying to get some more guests on here. Um, you know, we're dealing with some people that, that want to do it. We have some people that are interested in doing it. And then we have some people that we would like to have come on the show. And uh, for some reason, a lot of the people that we talk to, they are scared to do the show. They are nervous to do the show. They, they don't know how to just go ahead and just talk with the microphone set up and us record you know, our conversation and, and just, you know, legitimately it's just whoever we're talking with bullshitting unless, you know, we have somebody like Bryce who it's it's almost interview like where we're just asking questions, picking somebody's brain. You know, we've talked about in the past. We want to get our tattoo guy on here, uh, Danny from uh, Don't Tell Mom Tattoo. Um, he'll be, you know, he's interested. He said yes. It's just about a scheduling thing with him. Um We'll see what we can do as things roll on because it's going to be, you know, a busy, uh, busy next couple of months as far as getting stuff done and, and, you know, enjoying our time with stuff like that. Um, so like I said, if, if there's people out there that want to hear us talk about, you know, a certain topic we took the, on, uh, I believe it was Monday, Monday or Friday of last week. We talked about uh, a question that was dropped off on the Instagram page. Uh, dude asked us about the legalization of marijuana in California that they were going to vote on here in November. We spent a little bit of time talking about it. Um, the more questions or comments or if you just want to you know, say something, hey, we like the podcast or hey, you know, we don't. like, We're more than welcome to listen and read all the comments and everything else in between. Um, so make sure you do that. You know, you can... I'll say it again at the end of the show that you can find us on Instagram at totally underscore unprofessional. We have a, a link in our bio right there at the top. You'll see it's like a little different color. If you just tap that, it takes you straight to Podbean where all of our episodes are at. You can listen to previous episodes. Um, as I said, this is 21. So you got 20 different episodes. That's at least 20 hours and some of them are longer than an hour. So you got more than 20 hours worth of audio that you can hear uh, at any time, if you haven't heard it or if you want to hear one again, you want to hear me and Jake talk to each other again, my brother who was on the third episode, uh, you can play that one back. Um, you want to hear Bryce, Ritani Coe's interview with him when we, the MMA fighter, uh, the he's a boxer slash MMA fighter. He's on the show too. We interviewed him. Um, we've had, you know, some good stuff. Gio, my buddy Gio, who's been on the show for wrestling. Um, he's been on two episodes. You know, you can find... 
those two episodes on there. And Gio will be back here shortly. We got the Battleground pay-per-view coming up. So once Battleground uh, happens, we'll be have Gio back on that mon- that following Monday, and we'll talk Battleground and, and talk some more wrestling. Like we said, we want him on a little more frequently, but with the, some scheduling conflicts, he, we weren't able to get him on uh, any sooner until after Battleground. So we'll be looking forward to that too. Um, the UFC right now uh, is is in this situation where it's kind of mainstream, but it's not. Uh, this UFC 200 is a huge mark for the company. So, I mean, they want to do well. They want to do great sales, but I don't think they're going to do as great as everybody thought they were. And, and I think part of the reason why Dana White's not talking to John Jones is because it cost him money and it cost the company money who are in the middle of trying to sell the company. There's been two offers at over $4 billion for this company. And they're trying to make sure that, you know, this company looks good and that it's a money maker all the way through and through. But at the end of the day, you know, with guys getting flagged for doping three days out and you got, you're pulling guys off because they missed a press conference, it doesn't make the company look good. You know, right now ESPN covers, you know, the results of the fight and a lot of times they cover stuff here and there. But by and large, it's Fox Sports that has the deal with the UFC and so they tend to just go ahead and deal with them, you know, and, and that's fine. You know, I, the UFC and MMA in general is still very young for as, you know, as much as this is UFC 200, you know, it's still a deal where this company's young and they're still figuring things out and they're still trying to learn the format and they have the issues with the Reebok deal, which we've talked about, you know, there's, there's a lot going on with this company and they're still very, very young. So we'll see what happens when it comes to the selling of the company and and if they can straighten some things out. Me personally, I think that UFC 202 is going to outsell tomorrow. Uh, UFC 202 is Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz 2, Cowboy Donald Cerrone versus Story. I I can't remember Story's first name off the top of my head. And the third fight that I've already seen for it is Carlos Condit and Damian Maya. Three really, really strong fights. Cowboys is a name that people recognize, people know, they enjoy. Obviously, McGregor and Diaz, both polarizing characters that everybody's going to want to see. Damian Maya has been putting on a show the last few times he's been out there, and Carlos Condit has been around for a minute. So people know those names. Those are It's, it's going to be a great show, and I think that at the end of the day, when you look at sales and stuff, that it's going to wind up topping UFC 200 that it'll wind up being the number one selling pay-per-view when it's all said and done that they will own, they will own the top two spots with McGregor Diaz one and then the second uh, the first spot with McGregor Diaz two um, so it, it should be one of those situations where Conor McGregor proves that he's the drawing power that Nate Diaz gets a payday and and that you know his likability at this point from where he's at is up and Connor does his job and uh, sells the fight. You know, they both showed respect at the press conference yesterday. They both were uh, talkative. They didn't really talk shit to each other. They just kind of went with what was going on there and and they just went ahead and, you know, spoke a little bit about what they've changed and what they have going on with their camps and, and stuff of that nature. So it wasn't anything like super crazy or, or anything like that to note about that, oh, you know, he, he went ahead and um, you know, just was running his mouth a hundred percent, and it's it's fine. You know, it it'll be fine that if you don't get the same Conor McGregor, I think you get a refocused Conor McGregor. So we'll see what happens. And uh, Eddie Alvarez, after last night's fight, actually called Conor McGregor out, saying that you know he asked for an easy fight like Conor McGregor. Hey, if that's what you think, man. It could get you caught. So, it'll be interesting. It'll definitely be interesting when we find out, you know, does Nate have the the full camp and and does that mean that he really is untouchable? Or is it really going to be Conor McGregor switched up what he did and that he's going to be ready for Nate Diaz this time and it's going to be one-to-one? And and which was brought up at the press conference yesterday where Conor said, hey, if we go one-and-one, if I win... You know, on the 20th of August, then we're doing a third fight that I'd be down to do a third fight. So and I don't see any reason why not, because people will eat it up. They'll want to see it. I know I would want to see it. So for sure, they got to make sure that uh, 
that it's a good one and that, you know, Connor does his thing. So right now on uh, Fox Sports 1, they're showing some of the fighters in the crowd. Chris Cyborg and Forrest Griffin sitting side by side. They just showed Henry Cejudo uh, out in the crowd. He's one of They just announced him as one of the coaches for uh, the next season of The Ultimate Fighter. So those uh, those people out there, they've been showing different things. Uh, they're showing right now. They're showing a promo video now of Misha Tate and the Holly Holm fight, where uh, Misha Tate choked her out until she was completely unconscious and swinging. Um, so, Misha Tate, uh, I'll go ahead and give my picks for the fight, um, and we'll see how right I am come tomorrow night, and uh, we'll see. If my bets paid off, because I put in a couple bets with Matt, for uh, Manuel to put down for me in Vegas, since you know, obviously it's legal to bet in Vegas. So again, I'll start with uh, the undercard, uh, the prelims, and uh, and go from there. Uh, the Sage Northcutt and Enrique Marin. I got Northcutt coming through again. I just don't see him losing twice. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about Marin, but. You know, I, I see Northcutt coming out strong. Uh, TJ Dillashaw and uh, Raphael. I don't want to try and pronounce the name again. I'll just butcher it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and, and say that Dillashaw loses again for the second straight time. That uh, he's going to be so wound up about the fact that he lost to this guy once before and that he didn't get his shot at Dominic Cruz that uh, he's, he's going to wind up getting caught again. And whether it's decision, knockout, whatever, he's going to wind up getting caught and and losing. Um, Johnny Hendricks versus Kelvin Gastelum. As I said, Johnny Hendricks didn't didn't even make weight. And it seems like Johnny Hendricks is on his way out. Kelvin Gastelum, I got win in that fight. Um, And then Juliana Pena and Kat Zingano. Uh, I'm going to take Zingano. She she stopped both champion and challenger for UFC 200. I don't see any reason why Juliana Pena wouldn't be next. Um, and yes, Juliana Pena is a good looking girl. They call her the Venezuelan Vixen. So, um, for the fight's sake, I'm going to say Zingano. If we're going off of looks, I got Juliana Pena. So that's, that's the prelims that'll be on Fox Sports 1. Off the main card, like I said, it starts off with Cain Velasquez and Travis Brown. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with, uh, Travis Brown because you don't know which Cain's going to show up and, and you don't really know how it's going to go down. I'm going to go ahead and take Travis Brown. Uh, Jose Aldo, Frankie Edgar. Me personally, it's a personal choice. I got Edgar. He's just on too much of a roll to not win. Jose Aldo has been a mess. Now he's swearing that the the loss to Connor was a good thing when afterwards it was an obsession. So I'm going to go ahead and take Frankie Edgar, and I'm going to say him and Alvarez both hold the titles for uh, Coach Mark Henry. Uh, Daniel Cormier, Anderson Silva. I'm going to say Cormier. Cormier comes through and uh, and holds on that he's going to wind up wrestling with him. And his weight and Silva's not being used to fighting a bigger man like that. I'm going to say Cormier gets the win. Uh, Lesnar Hunt. Uh, my head says Brock, but my heart says Hunt. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with Mark Hunt, the Super Samoan. Uh, Lesnar's been out of the game for five years and looks great, but Mark Hunt's been in the cage a lot. A lot this last couple years so I think that just the regularity that Hunt gets from doing so is one of those things that gives him the big advantage in this fight and no Brock doesn't mind getting hit in the face but I just think that Mark Hunt's going to be the guy that that winds up getting him and I think it is going to be a knockout or a stoppage I don't think it goes decision I think that you know Mark Hunt knows that it can't be in the later rounds where Brock can still wrestle him down or that you know he doesn't have to test his cardio Mark Hunt needs to go for the home run right out the gate. Uh, and the main event, Misha Tate, Amanda Nunes. I got Misha Tate retaining. Um, I don't really have a, a distinction on how, but I just I have a feeling that she's going to be the one to retain and win. So those are my picks for UFC 200. We'll find out Saturday night if I'm right or not. We'll, we'll definitely talk about it on Monday. So we'll see, uh, see how right I am or how wrong I was. Um. Right now on uh, Fox Sports 1, as I said, we got the Ultimate Fighter finale, and they just finished talking to Misha Tate. Um, they're getting ready for the next fight uh, as they show Joanna in the back warming up, the straw, current strawweight champion. Um, 
The next fight, I believe, is the finalist fights from The Ultimate Fighter, which is Tatiana Suarez and Amanda Cooper. Uh, Tatiana Suarez is 4-0, and and Amanda Cooper is 2-1. and So it, it should be interesting. Those two are the ones that uh, made it for the women to the finals for uh, The Ultimate Fighter. And then uh, I believe it's one girl from each team. So it it should be a good thing. It's not two girls fighting from the same team where they didn't make it. It's it's one from each team, and uh, and that way you can find out which team really was better. Um, and then I believe in the men's, which will be after this one, uh, both girl or both guys were from Team Joanna, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, so and then after those two finish, it's the coaches fight. So. Apparently, uh, we're not going to get to see it because these fights weren't going so quickly. So I'm going to watch here and uh, make sure that uh, I get my quote-unquote money's worth from the women's division here. The, it should be a great fight. It was so close last time. But uh, you want to wind up getting the decision victory. And, and they, they've they been showing some heat between the two. And the videos they put together for them are, are pretty strong. So... We'll see uh, how it goes here at the end of the night. Uh, I was asked earlier who I think is going to win the strawweight fight. I got the champion retaining. I think she knocks out Claudia. Uh, Claudia is the better looking girl. If we're going off of looks, it's Claudia. Um, but going off a of fight, I mean, she took down Joanna a bunch last time, but Joanna caught her. And I think this time she's going to be smarter with her striking and, and that she's going to be more uh, aggressive in making sure she gets after her early and, and sprawling and making sure she doesn't get caught being taken down so many times so i i definitely got the champion retaining tonight in the ultimate fighter finale um and you know to the people that didn't make the ultimate fighter you know finale as far as like the contract the actual contract show i'm sure the that the guys getting exposure tonight that some and girls some of them will probably get their uh, contracts they'll get an opportunity to make some money and do some stuff and and uh they'll get an opportunity and to think about it like some of these guys get paid as we've talked about before they get paid peanuts and it ain't that great but i tell you what it beats a nine to five to do something that you love and it gives you an adrenaline rush like i'm sure most of these fighters feel you know a lot of them feel like oh it's just part of the fight game this is what i do but there's a lot of them that get this rush off of being in that cage and that they've talked about it that you know they enjoy being in there they enjoy that what what was once called that asshole puckering moment when that cage door locks and you realize it's just you and the guy standing across from you or the girl standing across from you and you're going about to go for blows and find out who's the baddest motherfucker you got in that building so uh you know i watching this summer seeing a lot of these young guys too man they're they're younger than i am and they're out here fighting on TV, and they're out here, you know, fighting for money, for sponsorships, and and getting to do this as their job, and, and it's freaking awesome, you know. Uh, now that, as we've talked about before with me and Manuel, you know, we we do coach basketball and stuff like that, but right now we're in our downtime, and if I can find some Muay Thai classes to take, I would love to take some Muay Thai classes or or even Jiu-Jitsu, either ones, um, near me, so that way uh, it give me a new challenge to do physically, and, and you know push myself to another level and, and it's a sport that you know I, I MMA is a sport that I definitely respect and uh, enjoy watching and, it, and it's been something I've talked about doing for a minute now is it, trying to find a way to get involved in one of the disciplines and and figure it out you know um, and I think that if there's a lot of people out there that if they could they would but now it's just now that it's fitting that I have some time to do so so hopefully it's something that uh, I can get on top of. And, and if I do, I'll make sure that we talk about it a little bit. We'll get some pictures up of uh, of what it looks like for me getting my ass kicked and, and stuff like that if I can make it happen. Um, so if if you know of any gyms in the 559 area that uh, can help me with that. And I'm not talking about like the UFC gym itself in Fresno. That's too far away from where I live. I'm not trying to go out there. Um, it doesn't have to be a major name. You know, if you know it's a legitimate gym that is qualified and that the coaches and trainers out there are legit, then please feel free to drop a comment on the uh, Instagram page or on the YouTube channel and uh, let me know. 
Uh, if you're a fighter out there and you know you're looking for some exposure from a pocket, drop drop some comments and some information on here. We'll shout you out on the podcast. You know, it, it's one of those things where you know we're up and coming and we're trying to get more listeners and more eyes and ears on us. You know, and we don't mind trying to put some eyes and ears on some other people. You know, and and hopefully if you know we can get some eyes and ears on us from shouting you guys out that you'll return the favor if you're ever around the, the area that we live in to come on the show for real. You know that that'd be great. You know, as I pointed out a few weeks ago on an episode, Chris Cyborg and her boyfriend liked one of the pictures uh, on our Instagram page, which was was pretty wicked. I I don't know if they listened to the podcast or if they even and cared if they just saw the picture and liked the picture. But um, it's cool to get noticed by somebody like that. You know, it, it's a big deal to us because uh, that it's something that, you know, we both enjoy. It's something that Manuel and I uh, are fans of. So if we can, you know, throw a little light on a sport that, as we said, it's still very young and it's still up and coming. We're, we're more than happy to help. Um, so, again, you can find us on Instagram at totally underscore unprofessional. The Podbean link is in our bio. If you look at the top underneath our name, there's a bio pay, uh, section. There's a little set URL that looks different than the rest. It's a different color. You can click on it. It'll take you right to Podbean. There's a list of all of our episodes right there. You can download them so you can listen to them whenever you want, or you can listen to them straight from the page and stop them and start them whenever you you have time. Uh, you can find our YouTube page on YouTube, obviously. Uh, it's Totally Unprofessional Podcast. Uh, it has all 20 episodes, and after tonight, it'll have the 21st episode on there. Um, and, of course, you know, we're more than welcome to taking comments on the YouTube channel as well. If you got comments and you want to say, hey, you know, is there any way I can get on the podcast? Or is there any way that, you know, you guys can talk about this or that? Or, you know, can you guys do a, a video of something that you're podcasting? Let us know. We're more than willing to listen. It, we're definitely taking ideas. Like we said, we enjoy doing this. We're not going anywhere. So the more ideas that, that roll in, the more that we can roll with it, the more interactive and fun it can be. So uh, tomorrow, or excuse me, tomorrow night, UFC 200, live from Las Vegas from the T-Mobile Arena. Manuel will be there live and in person. Hopefully he'll send some pictures. Maybe we can get some pictures from him and put them up on the Instagram page. Uh, Bryce Ritani Cove, who was on the podcast, who is a MMA fighter for Legacy, he is going to be at the fights. Him and a, a buddy of his from New Zealand will be at the fight, so they'll be there live. Uh, and then Monday, we'll be back with the podcast. It may just be me again, and Manuel may be back. It depends on when he uh, flies in from Vegas from having so much fun, so we'll see what happens. But uh, as of the Friday edition, and slash UFC edition, I'm Justin. You know, make sure that you're being positive out there. Put out positivity. Put out good vibes. Put out love. If you're a praying person, make sure that you're praying for those hurting, you know, and those around us. Not just the people that you see on TV, but the people that you see every day. You make sure that you tell your loved ones that you love them. And no matter what, that when you never know what's going on. You don't know when people are going to act up. You don't know when your day is your last day. So make sure that you show some love to the people that put it in and hold it down for you. Make sure that you show respect to everybody that... Even though they may not earn it, that you still respect them because you're that type of person. Because you show respect, you put out positivity, you put out love. And us coming together and doing something like that, that's a big deal. That's what will make change. Not hating on each other, not talking shit to each other. Us showing each other love and respect. So, I know that's cheesy. I know it sounds cliche, but it needs to be said. We have a platform to speak on this a little bit, like I said earlier. And I'm going to speak on it. So, as for... uh, Episode 21, this has been the UFC 200 edition. I'm Justin, and I've been totally unprofessional.